Let's go to the wasp's nest. Can do. Can I tell you that Bravo, I fixed it? the gas is back. It is you who restored it, isn't that so? Bravo, Mr. Holmes. When I was looking at the tutorial thingy, or the whatever earlier, it said something about look at the... at a place that was nearby, but I don't... But I don't know which one they were talking about. I don't... I don't know, because it doesn't have me look at things. That's... like, those are not important. Maybe this thing? Ah, yes. On this poster is written, Club for Socialist Jews, the Cradle of Liberty. Interesting. On this poster hmm. is written, Club for Socialist Jews, I don't know if that does anything, but it wanted... That was in the walkthrough, and I wouldn't have noticed otherwise, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Oh, I was so confused. I thought that the floor was smoking, not that there was an ashtray with just burning shit. I need something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, excuse me. Kitten? Meow. Meow. <gasps> Can I go donate this kitten to the place? To the There's pet no shop? way of returning this fortune to that lout Bluto. I will give him the satchel, but with other contents. Hmm. Something with the same weight. Am I really going to give him a cat? <coughs> no? Oh. Oh, you're purring. You are the most adorable cat, I swear. Ah, stolen jewels. Yes. A bag full of silverware. Okay. No, I'm not giving him the cat. Pass the sack to me. Did you look in? I give you my word, but it won't belong to you until you tell me where Squibby is. Fine. The poor idiot was taken by the peelers the other day. I don't know why some chap started to screech about it. He was the white chapel killer, but he ended up followed by an hysterical mob. In a flash, the bobbies had him rounded up and locked down. Do you mean at the local police station? Might. Might not. But if you or the doc talk to him, tell him that about the kayak business. I'll forget our score if he rats on the yank. He'll know. Now, hand over the bag. I say, that's all a little bit wishy-washy. I'm not sure it's worth the satchel. Hey, don't shake it like that, moron. If you don't want to end up with a knife in the back, you'll get busy with the pipe. Got it? Here, take it. That'll teach me for being a good Samaritan. Honestly, how rude. I'd best be off now. Better to not be around when he opens the satchel. Yep, true statement. But let's get going. Looks interesting. So, you little jack and apes, you want to ride on the big whirly? Hmm. Another day, perhaps, Mum. As a matter of fact. I would like to know if a chap I know called Squibby happens to be in this police station and how many policemen are in size. Information? Yes, but time is money for me, you know. Here are a few guineas. So, Squibby. I'll tell you everything that I know, my ducky. Nothing. <laughs> I know nothing about whether Squibby is there and I don't give a damn. The bobbies don't whisper sweet nothings to me, like the girls in the nice places. And now I'll get lost before I get all worked up. Hey, if you have something to offer to a lady, I could tell you a little bit more, maybe. I'll be back. You do that. The girls from the nice houses, that monster. Oh. Danny must have been referring to establishments like Miss Bella's that Watson told me about. What are you doing, Cat? I'll go there in a second, since I'm right by the police station. What are you doing? 
Stop looking at my floor as if there's stuff there. I don't like it. I can't just waltz into the police station to ask if they've got Squibby locked up. I'll have to come up with a ploy to find out if he's actually there. Then I'll need to get the policeman to leave for just a few minutes so I can talk to the prisoner. I dislike how there's always like this random person screaming in the background. Like, why? Why is there someone just randomly screaming all the time? Sup? My finger is bloody, apparently. Ah! Hi! How do we do? Good evening, Lucy. Do you remember? Why did you, uh. Downs. Why'd you say horse? You're strangely dressed. What have you come to do in the area? Uh, my nose. I've come to ask if any of your colleagues, or perhaps even yourself, associate with any of the policemen from the local station. Certain girls go with police officers, it's true. But Bella would be able to tell you more than me. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Happens, apparently. Very well, I'll be on my way. I like, wasn't really listening to anything she said, so hopefully nothing was important, really. You are a friend of Dr. Watson. Indeed. A fine man, your Dr. Watson. He got me out of a damn business with one of my clients. We gave this bore a lesson to remember, and he's since gone to France, having snagged one of my best girls. But it's a break from all of her chatter. You're looking for information about the police, is that right? I can't help you there. The girls concerned are busy. And anyway, I don't have the time. What is bothering you so much? A client left me a case of bottles as payment. It happens all the time. I'm saddled with all this stuff. He told me that these perfumes were the latest thing straight from Paris. Well, I barely smelled the first one when I nearly fainted. There might be some good ones in there, but I'd have to find out if it's really perfume, so that it won't burn the skin off my pretty girls. Madam, I will undertake to tell you exactly which of these products are perfumes, Stop. if you agree to entrust them to me for a little while. In exchange, I would like to know more about Squibby. Yes, I know him. We've struck a Heavens. deal, Mr. Holmes. I'll give you these bottles. Quit. I will need a book to help me identify Miss Bella's perfume. I believe the bookshop on Glenworth Street, not far from Baker Street, has just reopened. Let's go and take a look. All right, can do. Cat, stop eating plastic. Um, I'm not entirely sure what street that was. Hello? Open the door. Goodness. Where was that that he was then the were just talking about? Uh, wasp seat. We got Lucy's lodgings. We got the brothel. The clinic. The cobbler. The pet shop. I don't recall where. Is it this one? No, that's Solomon. So Solomon. Oh. Children? Hey, look. It's Mr. Detective. It's Shh, I'm undercover on a special mission. Don't blow my cover. Aye, aye, Captain. We won't let it slip. Now, what are you doing in this area at such an hour? You're far from home, aren't you? We've come to give pounds a hand. About his cat, you know. Whoa. Downstairs round is a nasty old lady Big Danny lives. She threatens to kill Pounce's cat because she's energic, or so she says. And it makes a cough and vomit just by seeing one. Allergic. Oh, that's it. She's still in pouncing his cat yesterday, and the poor thing took off, and hasn't been seen again. We've been looking for it, but nothing. Does that cat there belong to Pounce? Bert! That's my buddy! I found a cat earlier. Uh, let's take him to the pet shop. We might be able to take care of him. Let's go to the pet shop, children. I, uh, I had the cat before. I don't know where I was keeping it, but yeah. If you all go in at once, you'll scare the animals. Pounce, come with me. Everyone else, stay here. Such a cute cat. Also, look at this cage. The dog can't even stand up. I mean, he probably could, but not fully. 
Yeah, I put this snake in a cage earlier. He went from this nice big cage to this tiny, tiny one. What can I do for you? I have come to return your mask. Ah, thank you. If you need something else, do not hesitate. May I present young Pounce and his cat, Bert. Poor Bert, he's been injured. It's Big Danny who threw a cobblestone at him. Big Danny? Danny the Jaw? The Terror of the Highlands? Oi, that's her, mister. You know this lady? Lady is not the appropriate word. Fury, more likely. Danny is a night worker. Before that, she performed in a circus where she fought against men for a penny a round. It was said that she never lost a fight. Is there anything you can do for poor Bert? I don't know. This cat seems to be in a sorry state. I have a book on cats over there. Can you find it while I look at its wound? Yes. Still not sure where the uh, library was, but that's okay. It's a cute cat. Kind of looks weird though. Like the head doesn't really seem to fit. Uh, let's see. It has an irresistible attraction for all passing cats. The effect of its consumption on felines resembles in all ways the euphoric effect of alcohol in humans. We know that the simple fact of carrying an inch on one's person will be enough to cause even the most errant of cats stay glued to your heels. Interesting. Interesting facts. Oh my god. That's kind of what I was this looking must be at. The cat book Abraham needs. He's such a small cat though. He's so cute. What can I do for you? Here is the book on cats. Thank you, my man. I will see what I can do for this cat. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Alright. Well, cool. Got a purring cat over there. I kind of, earlier when I was uh, grabbing the cage to put this snake in, I was able to pick up three different cages, and I'm kind of curious if I could have fixed this poor little puppo and put him in a bigger cage. But I don't have those cages anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> now the question is, where is the library? <laughs> We've come to give Pounce a hand. About this cat, you know. Alright, so we got Solomon, we got <laughs> stuff, things, What's down this way? Can I even go this way still? Oh look, it's uh, it's not blocked off anymore. Cool. Bucks row. Okay, right, makes sense. Okay. I have no reason to go that way. Okay, useful. There's always a screaming woman anywhere you go in this city. For some reason, there is a screaming woman. Oh! The library's not even over here. I'd like it if this person could stop crying. Um, how did I go out further? Map of London, I want to go to Baker Street, please. The Barnes Bookstore. I will need a book to help me identify Miss Bella's perfume. I believe the bookshop on Glenworth Street, not far from Baker Street, has just <laughs> reopened. Let's go I and mean, take a look. Basically, though. Yeah, go then. I will need a book to help me identify Miss right. Bella's perfume. I believe the bookshop on Glenworth oh, Street, not far from Baker Street, has just reopened. Let's go and take a look. Uh, doesn't that mean I need to? Oh, I see. That's what the bookstore is. I thought it would have said library, you know? It's talking about a library and then it calls it a bookstore. You know? Why? Oh, okay. I'm like, one, why am I so tall and why are these looking like just packages of cocaine? 
So. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you the new bookseller in the neighborhood? Yeah, basically. Yes. My name is Barnes. You're one of my first visitors. Welcome. What are you looking for? I'm looking for work that can help me identify perfumes, a book that deals with vegetation and its possible uses in the domain, for example. I would recommend the Encyclopedia Spartica about vegetation. It consists of a reference on the matter. This book is the most complete that there is. Fine, I will take it. But it's just that, um, <clears throat> I have no idea where it is. Would you believe that my predecessor classified works by their acquisition date? Nowadays, we advocate a thematic classification. However, I am getting down to the task. You aren't looking for anything concerning the history of the scripts. I'm fascinated by the subject, and I already have numerous books on the topic. It is no doubt very interesting, but I need this book Spartica without further delay. Fine, fine. I will try to find the acquisition date of this encyclopedia, Mr... Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Ah, fantastic. You are the man for the job. Perhaps you could try to find the missing dates. That will buy you some time. There are some dates missing? Yes. I forgot to mention that detail. The dates were written on cardstock attached to the columns. Yeah, that's what I normally look like. Per section. As one goes along, you will see there is no specific order, and certain are missing. I remade the labels, but I don't know where to put them. They're there on the counter. Are there any other details to know? The proprietor inscribed a date every two years since his arrival in 1864, up until now, that is, 1888. He left a note regarding his method of shelving, but I didn't understand a word. I do believe, in fact, that he was a bit mad. Okay, so every well, other year. Every two years. All the numbers are placed on the same col All of the numbers placed on the same column must have different ending numbers. For example, 1886 and 1866 together would create an inconceivable disaster. Okay. <laughs> The dates whose numbers added together will produce the same sum cannot be put in, oh my god number of dates by column four five four the fork <laughs> okay oh i see four five four okay i okay i guess Ugh. Your face. Anyway, um, so I'll grab those. Let's see, so we got 864, we got a, a 240, a 648. Uh, okay. I put all of the labels back in their rightful place. Alright, so let me grab one of them. Uh, let's go with zero. And let's see, I don't have a zero in that, in four and in four. I think a zero would be okay to go there. Let's see, because it's not, or wait, let's see. Uh, yeah, no, I was like, it's not going in order, because it goes to most recent, the furthest away, then slightly more recent. So, I think that'll be okay. Let me, items... 88. Let's put an 8 over here. And then a 2 uh, over here. And then the last one being 6 right there. There, Mr. Barnes, the labels are in their correct places. That should facilitate your classification. Have you found my book? Yes, what luck it was to meet you. It was acquired in 1882. I will look for it. Thank you very much. I would suggest that you organize your books quickly. I am in the habit of visiting my local bookstore at least once a week. You are right, Mr. Holmes. Wait. Why does it want me to look there? That's not where I put my two. Oh, okay. Let's see. The Secret Life of Anchovies, Memoirs of a Public Accountant. Hmm. These books on various wide-ranging subjects are hardly going to be useful. Okay, well then why do you want me to look at that? There we go, that looks much better. 
Perfume is described in a musical metaphor as having three sets of notes, making the harmonious scent a chord. The notes unfold over time with the immediate impression of the top note leading to the deeper middle notes. Okay, and the bass notes gradually appearing as the final stage. Okay, so it going off of what this says, it starts at the very top, goes to the very deepest, then goes to the middle, and then ends with the bass. Okay. The quality of a perfume is usually assessed in terms of three parameters. Fragrance is the most important issue, describing essentially the smell of the perfume. Makes sense. It is followed by intensity of the smell, ranging from subtle scent to overwhelming odor. Also, safety of use is important because not all elements of a perfume could be sound for a lady's tender skin. Okay. This encyclopedia on plants and spices is just what I need to analyze these so-called perfumes. Let's return to Baker Street. Okie dokie, let's do just that. Let's go to Baker Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will need my work table. It's thick and stretching. I need something. Well, yeah, of course you need something. I was just hoping you'd do it your own self. I need something. Oh my god! Let's get to work and oh. analyze these perfumes. Okay. Uh, what about it? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to go with rose nectar. I don't know what I'm looking at. Oh, I see. I see nothing. Let's go with this one. Ah, I this see. This shape represents the essence of the perfume, which I must recreate. I see, I see. All right, these shapes represent the smells Goodness. at my disposal. Okay. Uh, okay. This shape represents the essence of the perfume, which I must recreate. Right, so this one... Foot oil? The fuck is foot oil? This perfume is ghastly. Why does it use foot oil? Lavender and foot oil. That sounds disgusting. That's a lot of green. Okay, so we got, we got resin oil. Rose nectar, and well, actually, that's not the right one. Let me uh, reset. That needs to go up, not in. So we got dog musk, the fork. Uh, so we're doing. I'm thinking blue. So we're doing whatever anzi oil is, and then we got coriander oil. Excellent. Now onto the next step. Oh God. Oh, yay, swamp water. What did the other one say? I didn't even see it call it something. This perfume is ghastly. Um, bitumen number 55. Okay, well, we're going with two in, so the resin oil. And then we got this tiny little resin oil here. So we got two things of resin oil. Useful. And what was this one? I, Fine. Oh, I have to go to okay. the broth. I was gonna look and see what it was after I clicked it, but apparently that's not something I get to do. All right, let's get going back. I need to go to the brothel so I can tell her that these perfumes are pretty shitty. Fine. I have to go to the brothel. Yeah, I was going to. I'm already here. So, my dear man, have you reached a verdict? I have distinguished the good perfumes from the bad, but even the good ones are nothing more than common sense for adolescents. <sighs> Who cares? It'll freshen up a few of my girls. Wait, there's a perfume here called Valerian. What is it? 
It's not really a perfume, technically speaking, unless you like cats. It's more of a kind of medicine. It smells strange. I don't really like it. Here, I can give it to you. And I have some information. Squibby is most assuredly locked up at the police station hereabouts. It would also seem that he's the one who doesn't want to come out. Do you know someone by the name of Danny? Danny? Big Danny Nutcracker? Uh, the one who hates cats? That's the one. You're interested in that kind of bird? Uh, be like dipping your biscuit in a pig's trough. She's dangerous, a real cyclone. So beware. And her appearance. She claims to adore perfumes. <laughs> She'd need this whole box to smell sweet. I doubt it'll take much to make Danny cooperate, uh, perhaps by offering her a little gift. Let's go to the police station. All right, let's get going. Come on, open the door. Also, Bailey, and don't think you're back yet, but you saying that you want pickles and then going and getting it. I, since before I started this stream, I've really wanted to go and get some more gummies from uh, the gas station up the street. But I didn't have time beforehand. So I was just like, it's fine. I'll just save my money and not get it. But I have just been sitting here wanting it for like the past three hours. Two hours, I guess. I was gonna say three, but then realized I started late. You still there, honey pie? Oh, uh, okay. You do that. I'll just give her this stolen jewels. It's fine. Do you remember me? Would you be kind enough to help me by telling me how many policemen are inside in exchange for this bottle of perfume? This is perfume. He's got a funny look on his face. Me, I want a pretty bottle with a button so that I can spray it all over myself. Got it? I mean, I, uh, I have that. I was just wondering if I was going to need that. Here we go. Do you remember me? Would you be kind enough to help me by- A real perfume? Well, there ain't much in the station. It was pretty busy, but now there's only one constable, dearie. My goodness, she is spraying so are. much of that. Now Danny has been sprayed with valerian, a scent that's irresistible as a ah! I must create a diversion in the street to make the policemen come out, but I need some cats. Lots of cats. To the pet shop. I must go to the pet shop. I didn't realize what that was. Well, I don't know if I feel bad for you, my lady. Ugh. Why is that constable just going around in circles? Why is this old man just standing by you guys? That's weird. What can I do for you? So, how is Bert doing? Uh, he'll pull through. But he must eat, and I have no food for him here. We will need to find him some. And where can we get some cat food? We must find Hardiman. He sells meat for cats. Yeah, that happens. It's around this time when he passes the end of the road. You might be in luck. You'll hear him from far away. He was always calling beep beep. Thank you for everything, Mr. Solomonovich. So, Pounce, shall we look for the cat food seller? Poor Bert has to be fed, and I might have some work for you and your friends. Sir. How do a little kebab for the cat? 
these little brats can't possibly all be yours. Pardon? Oh, no, none of them. Ah, oh, children, there are pride and joy, and yet... Do cats really like kebabs? They adore them. How many would you like? I'll take the lot. I beg your pardon, sir? How much for the lot? For two pounds? They're all yours, my lord. It's a deal. Listen Goodness. up, my little soldiers. You need to find all the cats in Whitechapel and lead them towards the police station. You'll be armed with delicious kebabs to entice them. Go, as quick as you can now. If my calculations are correct, the cats will be seduced by Danny's odor and will throw themselves on her. That should cause enough of a commotion to get the policemen to come out onto the street. <laughs> so many cats. Come on now, children. Let the cats alone. Oh my god. What? What's all this racket? Calm down. Come on, go. And make your shut up. Well now, let's see what I can do about Squibby. That was funny. I shall leave Bluto's treasure at the station. The police will know what to do with it. Uh, so long story short, uh, that lady hates cats. I gave her perfume that attracts cats. <laughs> I shall leave Bluto's treasure at the station. The police will know what to do with it. This must be the door that leads to the cells. Uh... I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to be pocket. Oh, okay. I guess I did it. I, you know, it was definitely something. Hey, how you doing? I'm gonna look around first, though. I know who are you. I've come to talk to you about Tumblety. So you're here to kill me, are you? Absolutely not. I've come on behalf of someone you know, who told me you have some explosive news about this American. In exchange, he has settled your bill on the kayaks. You ain't no street person, you. You're a bobby, trying to wind me up, aren't you? Not at all. Will you agree to talk? Not a chance. I'll give nothing away for nothing. I don't have to follow Bluto's orders. I'm in it up to my neck. And the bobbies won't agree to keep me locked up here for the rest of my life. You mean to say that you are here of your own accord? Damn right. Only death awaits me out there. I was almost lynched because I was blamed for the murder of those poor girls who were chopped up like animals. The police put me here for my own safety. That's when this journalist showed up. A journalist? A journalist? Mm -hmm. I socked him once for disrespecting me down at the pub. He said I'd pay for it one day. And that day came. He said he was going to squeal to the papers about me. With my description and my tattoos and all, I was arrested at the same time the police said they'd caught the Whitechapel killer. While waiting to write the article, he started the rumour. Now the streets ain't safe for me no more. I understand. Listen, if I find this journalist and make him promise to not write a word about you, and if I also agree to pay for you to get out of London, will you tell me everything you know about Tumblety? You sure know how to speak to <laughs> ruffians, don't you? How? You got yourself a deal. What's the name of this journalist? Bulling. Tom Bulling. Tom Bulling? That name sounds familiar. That wouldn't be the journalist that Watson met at the Wasp's Nest. Huh? Ah, no, nothing. I was just thinking aloud. Well, I'll be going, Squibby. You're right. It ain't healthy here. Hey, but... What are you up to here, you? Off with you, and make it quick before I take you in. I don't see him looking like a baby doll, but Let's I mean... Let's go to the wasp's nest. 
There's a baby carriage. It's been here since the beginning. Right next to what looks like a doghouse. A very tall doghouse. Pluto sees me, it could prove to be quite dangerous. Let's return to Baker Street to change. Ah. Okay. There we go. Good evening. There'll be a nice tip in it for you if you can tell me if you recently saw a journalist here. Yes, sir. A damn nuisance, that man. And a real cad. He cursed me out something fierce for staining a book that he put down, even though it was him who was shaking so much that he soiled it with a whole lot of ale. He was reading a book? Well, <laughs> not a real book. A halfpenny rag. He put it down on the ground, and I put it in the paper bin for the stove. It should still be there if it weren't already put in the fire. Goodbye, miss. At your service, me lord. Some paper, ink stains. This must be the table where Bulling writes his copy. The boy's standard. Okay. Um. Published weekly, now ready. Price one at penny. Oh boy. Uh, one and two, 24 pages, splendidly illustrated, or should I say, splendidly illustrated, in handsome wrapper, oh boy, spring-heeled Jack, the terror of London. The history of this remarkable being has been specially compiled for this work only by one of the best authors of the day, and our readers will find that he has undoubtedly succeeded in proving a wonderful and sensational story, every page of which is replete with details of absorbing, thrilling interest. Okay. New. Spring-Hilled Jack, a fantastical character that terrorizes the population of London. This journalist has some far from cheerful reading. Uh, nothing else much to do. Let me talk to him, see if there's anything. Evening. A pint for me and have one for yourself. I'm looking for a journalist, a good client of yours. Goes by the name of Bulling. Ring any bells? Haven't seen him for a day or two. He must be sleeping it off somewhere. Where to hide from the landlord when you owe some serious bread? What paper does he work for? I don't know, but I can't believe that he works at his rag, because he's always round the pub scribbling his useless papers. The last time I seen him, he spent all day at that table drinking and scratching away from morning till night. He finished by celebrating, and without the help of a rich chap, he would have fleeced me of a guinea. Thank you, my friend. That's nothing. Alright, so I'm uh, not entirely sure what you want me to do with that information, but okay. Uh, do you have anything else? Yes, sir. No. And I already know. Some paper, okay. ink stains. This must be the table where Bulling writes his copy. There's nothing else for me to look at besides trying to go talk to what's his nuts. Okay. Well, I'll see if that does me anything. No. If Bluto sees me, yeah. it could prove to be quite dangerous. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Let's return to Baker Street. Okay. Tom Bulling isn't here, but the Baker Street irregulars should be able to track him down. Perhaps Watson will have something to tell me in the morning.